Okay, so I was just going through my computer and I was looking at all the videos I've uploaded and I saw this one and I'm like, what is this? And I open it up and I didn't realize, <laughs> but before I left for my vacation in August, right at the beginning there, I actually had done a July wine and wrap up. So I'm sneaking this in. <laughs> it's now October and I'm sneaking in July's wine and wrap up, but I did video it back right at the end of July, August. So anyway, here it is for your enjoyment and due to my forgetfulness that I actually did this. So hope you enjoy. Hi everyone, it's me, the Book Nester, and it's time for another wine and wrap up. So July is gone and August is here. Cheers, my dears. So, what did I do in July? Well, I had a great reading month in that everything I read, I really enjoyed. So the biggest thing that happened this month was, of course, Booktubeathon. And I wholeheartedly was going to participate, and then I didn't. <laughs> if you haven't noticed, there's no wrap-ups, there's no check-ins, there's nothing. Um, I injured myself and wasn't feeling really great and one of the problems I had is I couldn't even sit up and read and I couldn't stay lying down for long periods of time I had to keep walking a lot so it just wasn't conducive and I wasn't feeling really great but prior to Booktubeathon I did do Save Our Cozy's Readathon and it was a lot of fun but I've learned something I don't know how much these readathons are really for me one of the problems is, is that I was completely distracted and wanting to always participate in whatever the tweeter, the tweeters, oh dear goodness, really? Tweeters, ugh. What was going on on Twitter? And it was so funny because by the time I'd get through reading what everybody's tweets were and what all was going on, the 15 minute reading spent, uh, oh, I really probably shouldn't do these wine and wrap up, should I? I cannot talk. So basically what was happening is I'd be so involved with all those different activities that were going on that I wouldn't read. And if we were doing a 20 minute reading sprint, I spent the 20 minutes getting to the point where it said on Twitter, now let's do a 20 minute reading sprint and then it was over. So things like that didn't really work. And part of that is because I know when it comes to technology, I can make it look like it's working, but I'm probably doing 50 times more than everybody else to make the very same thing happen. Um, I'm not efficient and I'm not quick at it. So that was something that I learned and not to mention the whole feeling that I have to read. Reading is enjoyment for me. And so I was putting these pressures and I was kind of like, you know what? I don't know that these are really for me. So I might try one or two more in the future. And, you know, I totally applaud everybody who participated. And I have loved watching your wrap-up videos. I've loved watching all the little fun little sprints that you did. Um, I had a lot of fun on Twitter with everything that was going on. But I didn't get a lot of reading done. But I still had a very good reading month. Number one, I hit my Goodreads reading challenge already. Which tells you it was probably pretty low. However, I think the reason that I've reached my goal as quickly as I have is because of BookTube. Because I am reading more because I'm a part of a community that is talking about reading. And it's just kept fueling that. I mean, I've really turned into a real hobby for me. So with that being said, I've had four books this month uh, that I have actually read. And three of them I have reviews on already, so I'll just go into them really briefly. And none of them do I f have physical copies of. Uh, so the four books that I read were two audiobooks. One of them was Remains of the Day. Love the movie and love the portrayal uh, done by Anthony uh, Hopkins. And you know what? The book was fabulous. And this is, oh gosh, did you like that? Fabulous. It was. It was really fab. Really wine. Wine probably is not a good idea. Oh, Rebecca. Anyway, <laughs> Anthony Hopkins' portrayal is either due to incredible writing and he got the same impression from that writing as the person who did the audiobook narration. And it's not Anthony Hopkins. I did check that to make sure. But 
they're just done so well. And I think it really comes from the authors, what he wrote, the character, the style. And I so enjoyed it. I learned that it was originally in the book. It's a road trip. Did not know that. This is actually him going to go see the housekeeper. And then he kind of goes down the proverbial, or physical in this case, memory lane. Um, is he a frustrating character? Yes, but he was in the movie as well. You just kind of want to shake him and make him come alive. And you do in this book. But it's, again, your human compassion, I guess, just kicks in and... Just listening to him and really understanding, you learn so much of, and really understand where this character is coming from. And that he is a relic to a past. And this was the time in place where those, the past and the future were really slamming into each other. So finding a role for him and us identifying with him in the present is difficult. Speaking of that... Uh, the other book that I listened to on audiobook was 112263 by Stephen King, my first ever Stephen King. I did a wrap up about that as well and a review. Love the book, love the narration, really enjoyed that story, uh, enjoyed the characters, enjoyed the whole thought process through it. Uh, sad that it's over with in a lot of ways. So the last two books. Uh, which are back in the library already because I needed to return them. The first one was The Shadow of the Wind, and I did a full review on that. Now, this is a wonderful book and often touted to be a fantastic book for readers, for avid readers, for people who love books. It's actually fantastic for anybody that might just dabble in reading. But for a booktuber, and most likely if you're here watching this, I think you will find that the phrases and the way that the author describes feelings towards books or books in general you will think is just gorgeous um, and it's funny because down in my comments I had told someone I normally only give two pages in my book journal to any of my books that I'm reading this one got five pages because there was just quotes after quotes and thoughts and feelings that I wanted to record as I was reading that novel. So I will put down in the description box below, of course, the video that I'm talking about with my review, but if you don't want to hear me gab on and gush about it, you can also go out to Goodreads. There's like a bazillion fantastic reviews about this particular book. The other book that I finished up was All Is Not Forgotten. And it is a psychological thriller, and so she has written other books, but this is her first foyer into psychological thrillers, and woo, is it a doozy. Uh, Wendy Walker has written it, and it is told from the psychiatrist's point of view that is treating a young lady who was savagely, horrifically raped at a party. She's about 17 years old in a small Connecticut town, so it has really disturbed the town and they're trying to find out who did it. But at the time, her parents agreed for her to take some medication, or for the to be administered some medication to her, that actually the idea is it erased the memory. In essence, it was to avoid PTSD. And this post-traumatic stress syndrome type of um, medication was developed for individuals that were off in the various wars and you actually do meet some a soldier comes back from there and all these stories start intertwining and it's about the psychologist trying to actually retrieve their memories um, so I have to say that from the scientific point of view of learning about how memories are made how they're stored how they're retrieved uh, I found it very very fascinating I will say that you're going to hate the narrator he is a right pompous git he really is oh something else. But part of that anger, frustration, shock in some cases towards this narrator is what told me it was a good book because it aroused all of those emotions in me. I felt like I was engaged the entire time throughout the book. I'll be doing a separate review of that though I probably won't need to after everything I just said. But uh, just so that if you're interested in that, that'll also be down in the description as well. So that is all my reading. That is what I've gotten done. Uh, I have started The Woman in Cabin number 10. I will be finishing it tonight, but that's technically August, so you'll have to wait to find out what my opinion on that is. Mm, I'm lukewarm right now. Not, not sure. I have to think about that one. 
And August also is going to be a time that there's some fun things that are supposed to be happening. We are taking a two-week cruise to basically the North Sea area, so uh, Amsterdam and Antwerp. Probably some places I can't pronounce or probably don't want to in front of you. I do know that I get to go to Guernsey, which I'm really excited because I just read this year about the Guernsey uh, Literary Society, L Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. So that'll be great to go there. I'm looking forward to that. I've got books that I have to read before we go so that I get brushed up on the history. And then I'm going to be kind of silent though. And so you might see a lull in my production. Please do not give up on me. You should see something no later than October. So if I kind of disappear off the radar, that's what's going on. But hopefully I'll have lots to talk about when I get back and maybe stuff you might be interested in. So like I said, it was a great reading month for me. Maybe not such a great a thon month, but I don't do a thons, obviously. Ugh. But, well, I don't do them well. <laughs> I will say that. I don't do them well. So I'm hoping that you have a great reading month in August. I look forward to hearing what you read in July and also what you plan on reading. And I'll be speaking with you soon. Have a great month. Thank you.